Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Kickstarter update number two. Uh, numero zwei, numero dos, which is all I know. I'm sorry, I do not know how to say that in French or Chinese or Swahili or anything. I probably should have looked some up. That would have been smart, but that was not to be. Anyway, hi folks. Uh, sorry, I haven't seen you for a while. Jen's been gone, so I've had a lot more responsibilities around the house than I normally do, and I, I've been meaning to do an update for a while, but I'm finally gonna get to it now. This might be a slightly longer video because I got a lot of stuff to tell you about. Four, four topics of conversation today, and I guess I might as well start with the big question, what's up with my face? Do I have a shiner? Is that what it is? Um, no, 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 no. Everything's cool. Um, these, are pivot head sunglasses, which you may notice, there's a camera right here. I could be filming you right now and you wouldn't even know, um, except I just would have told you. But anyway, um, you remember this was one of the earlier, the lower stretch goals. We hit that so hard and so fast and it's so far in the rearview mirror now, I figured what the heck, let's go on ahead and order those because I was really excited to give them a try. Really couldn't wait. It showed up a couple days ago. I slapped them on. I made some test videos. Yesterday I did a test run through of Walnut Grove with them and First of all, let me say, these are, this is an excellent, excellent product. For just anybody who's curious, just for their own, um, you know, in case they ever think about buying them, really high quality, they feel really comfortable. I mean, I think they're actually pretty cool looking, in all honesty, I mean, they look nice, you know, they, they don't look geeky, they don't look like Google Glass or anything like that. The quality, the video quality these things uh, record is fantastic. And the audio is really, really good too. I mean, I got nothing bad to say about these things. I'm very, very impressed by them. And if I were doing run-throughs of uh, extreme mountain biking or hang gliding or uh, stuff like that, these would be a total keeper. But I think if they have any weakness at all, it's that something that's about a meter from your face there is just too much motion. I thought, I was hoping I was gonna be able to keep my head still, and I tried really hard, much more than, I'm not trying right now to keep my head still, but I was trying to keep my head as still as I could, but even still, there was just way too much ambient motion. You know, when, when, the, when your focus point is off in the distance, you don't notice it so much, but when it's right here, you notice it. And if you'd like to see for yourself, I posted the tests on a thread, on BoardGameGeek, the uh, links for that are in the show notes, um, you know, on YouTube and here on Kickstarter. So go check those out if you if you if you're curious to see, and you can join the discussion about it. But yeah, I think I agree with most folks. It was a nice try. Um, it could have been a contender, but yeah, it's just I, I don't think my use for them is exactly what's necessary. So these they're going to go back. Oh, wow. Did I mention these polarized lenses work very, very well too? Wow, okay. It's uh, quite a bit brighter in here than I thought. Okay, um, so they're gonna go back. Uh, you know, the Pivot Head, the publisher, they've got a really great 30 day, no questions asked return policy too. So they've been fantastic. I got nothing but but high, high praise for Pivot Head. Um, and if you're doing run throughs of something other than board games, you might wanna check them out. Or, you know, I mean, I could definitely see using these just, just to have them. They're just cool. Um, I, I filmed me walking around the house, um, giving the dogs a treat and feeding the chickens. It's just cool. I mean, to like capture your life from, a, I'm, I'm not gonna turn this into a commercial for Pivot Heads. Long story short, I got them for a purpose. They don't work. It's your money. I'm not giving you what you need. So they're gonna go back. And what I'm gonna do instead is, I'm just gonna try and buy another just regular camcorder like, you know, like this Panasonic here. And I will be using a tripod. Jen got a cheap tripod for five bucks at a garage sale. It's really kind of manky and uh, really rusty and stuff like that, but it works. So I'll be getting another camera and I will be starting in the future to, as soon as I get this other camera, to do the, the steady cam shots where the camera doesn't move and you just have the one view for all the folks out there who cannot handle all the excess motion but would still like to watch my video. So that's still coming. I'm still gonna deliver on the uh, stretch goal just with a different piece of equipment. Sorry, Pivot Head, oh, but oh, these are so lovely. I will be sad to see them go, but that. You know, it was worth the try, right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. But anyway, moving on to, to update, update number two. And now this, no, 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 no. Let's say I was gonna do um, a really, the coolest update I'm gonna say for last. So definitely stay to the end. This one's very exciting. The two interim ones um, are, well, first of all, a lot of people have asked, hey, you're at 16K, that's awesome, but it's slowing down. What are we gonna do? What's the next stretch goal? Stretch, 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 gotta get more. And. I, I don't know, you know, it's funny, I ran into this last year too, right around the time I was hitting 4K, which is, you know, where we topped out, people were saying, gotta have more stretch goals, more, and I'm like, do we? 
I mean, I've got enough. I've got enough to do what I set out to do. I'm, I'm just trying. This is a hobby. I'm not here trying to take money out of your pockets. I already do that enough because you end up buying half the games I do run-throughs for. So, you know, I don't need to, to take your money. You guys have already been incredibly generous. I'm, I'm overwhelmed, as is Jen. We are so thankful. So, I mean, we don't need... And, you know, last year I got around 4,000. And this year I have about four times as many viewers based on my YouTube subscriber numbers. So, it's not surprising that I have about four times the Kickstarter this year. And you know, it's so big, I'm definitely going to be able to more readily afford more expensive games that I might have passed on last year, so I'll be able to do a wider range of games for you. Uh, you know, so I, it, it's, and you know, it'll really offset the fact that it costs a ridiculous amount of money to get anything sent here to Malta. It's just insane. Did I mention customs? Oh my god, customs. Um, unfortunately, when I return this, I won't be getting my shipping back, and I won't be getting my customs charges back. Customs. Oh, Maltese customs, I hate them so much so much. I don't have any hate in my heart except for Maltese Customs. But anyway, um, sorry, I've got totally, yeah. So, I mean, you guys have already given so much. And really, about the only other good stretch goal that it really kind of made sense to me was going to Board Game Geek Con this November in Texas. And I have to admit, I'd love to do that because I love Texas. Jen and I lived there for several years. Um, all, you know, if you're ever in, in, in or near Austin, you've got to go to Salt Lake Barbecue. Best food in the world. Ambrosia of the Gods is the Salt Lake Barbecue sauce. And Amy's ice cream and Dan's hamburgers and um, you know, going to the Alamo Draft House and watching a Mr. Sinus show. Oh my gosh, I love Austin. But, but uh, you know, anyway. I'm still just not sure if it makes sense because, you know, I will have done Gen Con, I will have done Essen. Those are the big shows of the year to actually you know, cover all the newest and greatest games for you guys. I would just be going to Board Game Geek just to kind of hang out for a few days and get some good barbecue. And I don't know if that's the best use for your guys' funds. Um, you know, when I could be spending that money getting more games to cover. Now, I do realize it's at some point there gets a point where I just can't cover any more games because I'm, I'm already, you know, way under the eight ball as it is. But anyway, so I'm just not sure if we need to come up with another stretch goal to get more, 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 more. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking, but definitely, by all means, give me comments, give me feedback, let me know what you think. If somebody can come up with something like, oh my god, of course we should do that. Like, this could have been a game changer, but it didn't turn out quite to be. But if anybody has any more ideas, let me know. Topic number three. This is another bit of feedback I get quite a bit. Folks are, are a lot of folks are kind of bummed that they missed out because you know on the day I went live with this Kickstarter campaign, all the director and co-director and producer and executive producer um, slots, boom, they vanished instantly. Um, and so a lot of people are like, oh, I really wanted one of those because there's a game you have that um, what? Uh, do, do, do. I really, really, really want you to cover Gauntlet of the Fools because you say it's good and Donald X Vaccarino, uh, and, uh, but nobody ever votes for it. Totally random choice there. And um, yeah, I'm really sorry about that, but as it turns out, uh, with, with the number of those backers I already have, two games every month for the next year are going to be, you know, uh, backer chosen. Plus, on top of that, there's going to be three more that are voter chosen. So that's five games every month that are already being directed by you guys. And, you know, considering on average I probably do around 15 games a month, give or take, um, that's a big, big portion. And I've got other games i got to cover too, you know, ones that you know, publishers have, have uh, given up or, you know, the occasional Kickstarter prototype or whatnot. So I think two a month is good. So I don't necessarily want to add any more of those director producer slots. But I have an idea that I think is very, very cool. Now, I posted about this on Board Game Geek, and nobody seemed to... Re I, I think I got like one or two replies. So it seemed like nobody really was interested. So I'm thinking maybe it's not that good idea, but I'm putting it to you, dark, lidless eye of the camera that represents all of the internets. Um, let me know what you think about this. I was thinking about adding another backer level, you know, probably uh, you know around the same level as the you know the director, producer, exec, you know, somewhere in that higher price range, and there would only be four or five slots, and I'd call it the Star Chamber, because not that I'm a big. Kirk or Michael Douglas fan, but uh, the Star Chamber, that sounds awesome. Wouldn't you like to be in the Star Chamber? But it could be called the Executive Council or the Super Friends or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But, um, you know, I, I'd set this up. There'd only be a small handful of people. And what people who back at that level, every month, 
after the voting is done, I would have a, a quick, you know, over a, over a couple of a couple of days, email conversation with everybody in the Star Chamber, and we would collaboratively come up with another game that I'm going to film every month. So that means, um, you know, one more. So that's six uh, games a month that are chosen by, you know, the, the Greater Auto Runs Through Community every month. That's, I, I, that's not too much of an ad, but I think that'd be so cool. I'm really looking forward to it. I love talking with people about what games I should do. And I would be actively involved. In, I'd be making suggestions as well. Hey, you know what? I've been thinking forever about covering, um, you know, about doing another video of Galaxy Defender now that I've got the full version. What do you guys think? Should I do it? And then somebody else would say, no, 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 no. Rich, you've been sitting on quarantine forever. When are you going to do that? Nobody's done a good video for quarantine yet. Um, you know, Shut Up and Sit Down did one, but I, I want to hear what you think. You know, I mean, and then you know, we would just have a group discussion via email, and that would be so much fun, I think. Because I love talking about games. But like I said, nobody seemed to really bite at the idea when I talked about it. So let me know what you think. You know, post on Kickstarter or on YouTube or Facebook or Board Gaming, wherever you see this video, let me know if you think that's a good idea or not. I think it's kind of cool. The Star Chamber. Don't you want to be on the Star Chamber? Um, anyway, so that was number. Now, but anyway, thank you for waiting to the end, because here comes the fourth and best one by far. Earlier this week, um, Constantinos, who is the head honcho at Artipia Games, contacted me totally out of the blue. And I thought maybe he had a prototype for a game he wanted me to, to film. But it turns out, well actually, well, first of all, Artipia Games, they are an awesome, awesome European board game publisher and, and uh, based in Athens, Greece. Uh, I've actually been to the guy's house. Jen's been to the guy's house. Jen has actually helped pack some of his boxes. Uh, so he's a great guy, I really like him a lot. And, um, you know, he, so he emails me, he says, hey, Rado, um, uh, great, great job. This is fantastic. And I'm like, oh, thanks. I'm, I'm a big fan of Artipia, and it's nice to know he's a big fan of me, too. But what I didn't realize is, here's how much of a fan he is. What Constantinos has offered, and this is totally out of the blue, I did not ask for this at all, it's totally off him, and I, but I think it's a great idea, is he is offering three Artipia games. And Artipia games, they're fantastic. Like um, Briefcase, we really like, this is another one that should probably get a run through. Maybe the Star Chamber could help decide its fate. Or um, I did a run through for Shadows of the Empire. We really like this one. And, ah, oh, Among the Stars. Now this is a hard game to get in some corners of the world, um, but it's it just barely missed Jen's top 10 favorite games of all time. Um, you know, For Jen, it's a seven wonders killer. Anyway, Artipia, they make great games. And what they're offering, what Constantino is offering is three games Anything from their catalog shipped free of charge anywhere in the world. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say thank you publicly to Constantinos. It's very, very kind and generous. And this Sunday, day after tomorrow, is it Friday right now? I think so, yeah. So Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. At some point during the day, I am going to put a new backer level that only have three slots, um, so people can go on ahead and you know upgrade their current uh, backing level to that or whatever they might want to do. And, um, you know, they'll be able to work out where, wherever they are in the world, what Artipia game they want to receive. Now, now, I could just put it up right now, but I'm really sensitive to the fact that when I made this Kickstarter campaign launch, a lot of people were like, I didn't know it was going to launch. I didn't get any advance warning. So here's the deal. On Sunday, I will do another update. And anybody who is already a backer, even if you only backed at the $1 level, will get an email notification. And what that update will say is, two hours from now, from the moment that I send that update, I'm going to uh, make the Artipia offer live. So hopefully, if you're near your email on Sunday, you will get advance warning, and if you really want to, you can kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, just kind of loom and um, you know, I mean, you know, start the countdown, and you'll know within two hours, give or take a few minutes, that that you will there will be that option. Now, I don't know if this is necessary. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be a rush for these, or maybe they'll sit there for a few days. Who knows? But I just don't want to take any chances of people who really want it not getting a fair chance to get it. So. That was update number four. This Sunday our, is our Tipia Sunday. Saturday, tabletop day. Don't forget to go out there somewhere in the world and play some games with people. I will be doing it, and I'll be filming it at the University of Malta. Um, but Sunday is Rotto Runs Through Kickstarter 2014 our Tipia Day. So, folks, that was it. Thanks for your patience. Sorry for the delay on this. Um, it turns out when Jen's not here for any length of time, there's a lot of stuff around the house that needs to get taken care of, and all of a sudden I got to do it, and so uh, my time's been gobbled up a little bit more than normal. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, talk to you guys more soon. And again, thank you so much for all the support. It's really, really exciting. And uh, I think I'll just end it right there by quoting one of the greatest films of all time. Where we're going? No, wait, wait, no, no. How's it go? How's it go?
Roads, where we're going, no, no, how's it go? Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Okay, folks, talk to you later. Bye-bye.